Aloha, Pastor Tom Choi here. It's good to be with you today. We're concluding our series on gospel discipleship, how the style of the four writers of the accounts of Jesus informs us of how we do discipleship. Today we focus on the Gospel of John. It is for many the favorite book on the life of Jesus out of the four. It contains perhaps the best known passage of all, John 3.16, and I'm going to quote it for you, but I can't help using the version that I know the best, the King James Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This verse has been called the gospel in miniature. For me, the prologue to the Gospel of John, the first 18 verses of the book, which we heard from Ashley and Amalia, is the best encapsulation of the good news of Jesus Christ. It was probably a hymn that was written in praise of Jesus that John incorporated into his book. For John, Jesus is the one who was with God in the very beginning. Note the opening words, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, reminds people of the beginning of the Bible in Genesis. You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Later in the prologue, John writes, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In describing Jesus as the Word, John meant to convey that Jesus was the embodiment of Scripture, the very Word of God, in himself. If you want to know what God is like and what Scripture means, says John, look at Jesus. John will also say in the prologue, From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. As the law was given through Moses, so grace and truth came into being through Jesus Christ. This idea of grace, the unconditional love of God, is central to John and central to Christianity. Turning now to gospel discipleship and the Johannine pathway to discipleship, what is very clear is that Johannines are, usually more than any of the other types, the ones for whom Jesus is absolutely central to who they are as Christians. They sit at the feet of Jesus, worship, and adore him. They are also the ones who live the closest to Scripture alone. While others may focus on the way the Holy Spirit touches their hearts, and others may focus on how God is the creator and that they may live in the midst of nature or have creativity like God, Johannines are much more likely to say, what would Jesus do? They are often the most traditional thinking disciples, and since they evaluate things based on the teachings of Jesus, they are also very committed to lifelong learning and are very thorough thinkers. Because of this, they have very high standards and expectations of their churches, of their leaders, of everything about their faith. And for them, the fall from grace of a leader, such as a pastor, is their primary spiritual crisis. So as we come to the end of this series, and again, I want to thank Kim Howe for implementing this as our theme for August, let's summarize how each discipleship pathway can help make a great church. Starting with the Markins, their vision and creativity provide direction, hope, passion, and excitement to ministry. But if you have vision up here and reality down here, how do you put them together so it happens? Well, you give it to Matheans. They are the worker bees. They are the arms and legs of the vision and it will happen if you have Matheans in your midst. Now, vision and hard work are fine, but if it doesn't have a personalized touch, if the ministry doesn't have a heart for people, 
it will come across as cold and methodical and unappealing. Now that's where Lucans come in. With their focus on people, they will make sure that people are cared for and loved. Now, if the ship veers off a bit, the Johannines will keep everyone centered on Jesus and they will be the anchor of stability that reassures and strengthens the congregation. So as you see, no matter what your gospel discipleship profile is, you are an important part of our church or whatever church you may someday be a part of or a part of now. Now, the way you go about it may be different, but each has its importance. And we have to learn to understand the different styles and realize that they are serving God in a different way than you, but nonetheless serving. For example, a Matthean who is busy serving meals to the homeless might raise eyebrows at the Lucan who is sitting down talking with others, but both are serving Jesus. The Matthean is feeding the body, very, very important, and the Lucan is feeding the heart and the soul, also important. I am so blessed that I am one of the pastors of a church where we have all four types and that we are helping each other work toward being a great church that serves the Christ who was with God in the beginning and remains with us to make sure grace and truth flourish on earth. I hope that will always be so. Amen.